Get into iReport. Get into CNN. Good news. About 4.5 million U.S. workers will see bigger paychecks starting this week. Now, on July 24th, the minimum wage is set to rise 11 percent from 6.55 to 7.25 an hour. This is the third and final step in a federally mandated increase. Restaurant and retail workers are expected to benefit most from the jump. And no surprise here, experts say higher wages reduce costly turnovers and increase worker productivity. But with unemployment at 9.5 percent, some are wondering if this hike is enough to stimulate job growth. A new study shows African Americans and Hispanics are significantly less prepared for retirement than their white and Asian counterparts. Why is that? And what can be done about it? Here to discuss and, of course, offer us some advice is Barb Hogue of Hewitt Associates, one of the partners in the study, along with the Ariel Education Initiative. Also joining us is Ryan Mack, the president of Optimum Capital Management. Welcome to you both. Thank so, you. Uh, guys, I want to start Thanks. by showing some of these numbers from your study, Barbara, which I think are so interesting. Uh, participation Great. rates. 77% of white workers, 76% of Asian workers, and then a big gap, a big drop among African American workers, 66%, Hispanic 65. You can see the numbers right now. What's going on here? Well, I think there's a lot of things that could be impacting that. What we saw in this study, it was a study of over 3 million workers, and we just it was really designed to look at the differences by race ethnicity. So there can be a lot of factors going into it, but even when we adjusted for factors like um, age or service or pay, we still saw disparities by race and ethnicity. All right, so when you look at reasons why this might be, Riot, I, I think a lot of people might say, oh, it's financial education. Mm -hmm. Is that enough of an answer here? Well, I think that you also, you can't remiss uh, by looking at class and socioeconomic conditions. You know, poverty levels in the white community is about 11.5% as opposed to the black community, it's about 32%. So with three times the level of poverty, you might have less propensity to want to, to be able to invest in. So, so African Americans are putting their money at food on the table, exactly. a roof over your head, instead of yeah. maybe into 401ks. Let's look at participation rates for, or, or contribution rates for just a second. Again, Asian and whites leading the pack, African Americans and Hispanics are behind. Barbara, let's talk about this for just a minute. You know what's interesting about this is that a lot of companies now are doing automatic 401k enrollment, so more people will be be contributing but why do we see such a disparity here well so this is the next part of the equation so the first step is do they get in the plan and that's the participation rate but then once they're in at what rate are they saving and here we saw a large disparity even after we adjusted for things like pay age and, and service hmm. um, so the why behind it could be influenced by a lot of factors such as their situation outside of the home or how much total household income they may have, or it could be attributable to just their comfort level with saving in a 401k. Ryan, doesn't this set up racial minorities in this country to be not stable in retirement, to have issues, problems, uh, you know, uh, paying for their households? Well, it's, it's definitely, it's a lot of issues in terms of we need to be more diligent in making sure we're preparing for our own retirements. Uh, and on, on one side, we're celebrating the 55th anniversary when Lyndon Johnson passed the Civil Rights Act back in 1964. So pre-Civil Rights era, there are a lot of things that we were not uh, given access to that can help us attribute, accumulate wealth. So therefore, you're getting a lot of first-generation investors that might not have had as much uh, inheritance bequeath, bequeathed to them. And second level, we also have over a 90% consumption rate within uh, black and Hispanic communities. So we're spending a lot of, of our, income, 90% yeah, so, of income. Yeah, so exactly what we're doing is we're sometimes using debt to purchase things that we don't need to impress people that we don't like. So we have to make sure that we're being a lot more diligent about what we have to make sure we can save and th start thinking more towards the future. We all need to be more diligent, I think. Mm -hmm. Barb, I want to dig down into your study just a little bit more here because you've got another interesting finding that I was surprised by, and that's who invests in stocks and at what rate. Tell us your findings and, and what they tell you. Right. So when it came to how much people invested in equities, we saw a disparity, especially among the African-American community, where less money was going into stocks overall. And we saw this consistently across age. So you look at age and can argue that people at younger ages should be invested more in stock. But regardless of age, we saw a difference there. I think that's fascinating. 
you know, Ryan, I have to ask you, you know, the Madoff headlines, what's right. going on in the financial markets. Is it possible that racial minorities just don't trust the system enough to invest? Well, I think that's a huge component of it. Uh, I do believe if you would have asked my grandmother, her bank was actually her bosom. So she didn't, she didn't trust the banks, didn't want to go to the banks. Um, but in, in a, also, in addition to that, we have to make sure that in terms of just exposure and knowledge into the markets of really, you know, one of my aunts called me one time and said, Ryan, what is a stock? And that simple question really is not a lot of discussions around black and African and Hispanic dinner tables about investments, fiscal responsibility. We need to up that. So you can bequeath investments, you can bequeath wealth, but you can also bequeath knowledge from one generation to the next generation. So if you're teaching your children and having those conversations, you can uh, increase the likelihood right. that they'll begin to increase their investments in equities and stocks. Great information. Ryan, Barb, thank you both so much for being with us today. Thank you. This week, CNN continues its investigation of the most challenging issues facing African Americans with its Black in America, too. Be a part of the conversation, follow the topics that matter to you, and track all the discussions at CNN.com slash Black in America. Soledad O'Brien reports Black in America, too, this Wednesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on CNN. And from low unemployment to great school systems to below average crime, the small towns on Money Magazine's best places to live have a lot to offer. We'll tell you where they are next.